Thank you for joining me on my masterclass. Now, today we're talking about three businesses that will make you a millionaire tomorrow. Now, these are the three, one, two, three, three businesses that will make you a millionaire tomorrow. Now, when I'm talking about millions, you know, I'm not just talking about millions in a currency like the Zimbabwean uh, dollar. I'm talking about millions, you know, in a currency like the US dollar. And these are the three businesses that are going to make you a millionaire tomorrow if you get into them today. You have to understand something there that you cannot prepare for war on the day of war. So you've got to be prepared for war before the day of war comes. So for instance now, if war suddenly comes upon you and then you start to prepare, you're going to be defeated. So you've got to prepare for war before war comes. Long before, you have, you've got to always be prepared. I'll give you a very good example. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, they're making every second, every second, they're making a thousand dollars in profit. Every second. Now, you can research it. Don't take my word for it. I encourage people to fact check me because I did in fact. Now, why are they making so much money? You see, nobody knew when the next pandemic was going to come in by about like maybe 2018, 2019. But these guys, they had a research and development team. And so they were ready. They were getting ready. They were, you know, doing human genome sequencing. Because, you know, every other, you know, year or so, you know, you're going to have like um, um, a, a very, very, an epidemic. And then every other decade, you know, or so, it, can, it might become like maybe um, um, intercontinental. And then every other decade, it becomes a pandemic. And so they were ready. And now they are reaping a lot of money. So now, imagine maybe a pharmaceutical company, they just said, oh, there's a coronavirus uh, pandemic, and then they start to hire um, uh, pharmacists, they start to hire microbiologists. By the time they get their acts together, the pandemic would have happened and gone, and the world would have moved on to another thing. So you need to get ready before war comes. And you have to understand is that you are fighting a war. You know, you're fighting a war with poverty. Now, I've traveled around the world. I've traveled around the world. If you follow me, you know I travel a lot. I spend a great deal of money traveling. And I've seen the systemic, generational, endemic poverty that's in Africa, in Asia. A lot of people are surprised that there's so much poverty in Asia. I've been to all parts of Asia, India, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Thailand, you know, you name it, Nepal, Maldives. I've seen some kind of, in fact, you know, heart-wrenching poverty. And the only way that you can address this poverty is by teaching people how to make money. And so you got to start now. You know, you don't want to be up to date. You know, you want to be up to tomorrow. You have to be up to tomorrow. So without further ado, what, what are these three businesses that are going to make you a millionaire by tomorrow? Now, the very first one is this. Real estate. Real estate. Real estate is not so such a big thing right now in many parts of the world, you know, including a country like Nigeria, because of the recession that was brought in by the uh, the Nigerian government um, in 2015, uh, and then also perhaps in a country like um, maybe uh, Cameroon, you know, and then in a country like Nepal, because I've been to Nepal. But real estate is the way to go for for the future. Now, let's take a country like Nigeria. Real estate might not be a very a, a big thing right now just because the economy is reset. So there's not a lot of money going around. Before 2015, you know, I mean, uh, from 2007 to 2015, real estate was so big in Nigeria, it was massive in Nigeria. You know, the real estate market, market in Nigeria was bigger than the real estate market in Los Angeles. And you can research it, you know, CNN did an article about it. But when the economy went down, obviously the purchasing power of Nigerians went down. But this is not a permanent thing. It's going to, I mean, like, it's going to come out. And then, how do we know this? We look at data. Right now, Nigeria has a population of about 209, 200 and uh, 200. 0.9 million. So that is 200 million, 900,000. So 200.9 million. Nigeria has a population growth rate of between 2.5% and 3%. You know, um, it's actually about 3%, but then there's a lot of infant mortality, so it reduces to about maybe 2.5, 2.7%. And then, right now, Nigeria has a housing deficit of 17 million. So that means there are, I mean, like, the, Nigeria needs 17 million houses. You know, if you, and you can research this, the Nigerian government set a target of building 300,000 houses. Uh, two days ago, they just revealed that of those 300,000 houses that they, that they, wanted, that they had um, a target to build, they've only built about 15,900. So that's a drop in the ocean. Now, Nigeria has a population now of about 200.9 million. 
Every day in Nigeria, 16,000 babies are born every day. Every year in Nigeria, the population of Nigeria increases by about 5 to 6 million. Every year in Nigeria, by about 5 to 6 million. Now, you think about that. You know, you think about that. Now, the housing deficit, and you, can you don't have to take my word for it. You can research it right now. The housing deficit in Nigeria is 17 million. By the year 2030, by the year 2030, Nigeria is going to have a population of about maybe you know you, the okay. Let me let me put it this way: the world's population right now is 7.9 billion. In 2030, the world's population is going to be 8.9 billion. Nigeria's population is going to explode to something like maybe 230 or 235 million or 240 million. Now, it's projected that by the year 2030, Nigeria's housing deficit will grow from 17 million to 22 million. Now, you think about it. If you don't have a house now, there's a lot of competition in a country like Nigeria. In a country like uh, Ethiopia, where Ethiopia, they have a um, housing, uh, sorry, a population growth rate of 2.5. So, after Nigeria, Ethiopia is the second largest country by population in Africa. And they also have, I think in Ethiopia, they have something like a uh, 12 million um, housing deficit. So, if you're living in those two countries, if you're looking, living in a country like India, you know, where they also have a deficit in, in India, and then if you live in a country like um, uh, Cambodia, they also have a deficit. So you look, you, you're thinking about it now. If you don't have a house now, how much more problematic is it going to be for you by the year 2030? So there's going to be, the population is exploding in your countries. The population in Europe, the population in Europe is not exploding, it's actually contracting. You know, the, 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 I mean, a number of European countries, their population growth rate is actually less than 1%. So they, they need to fill it in by, a, by immigration. But in these countries, the population is exploding. So if you don't have a house now, just think about what it's going to be like in 2030, when the Earth's population is going to be 8.9. What's going to be like in 2050, when the Earth's population is going to be 10 billion people? So in Nigeria, the population of Nigeria is going to be by 2050 over about it's, it's projected to be close to 300 million. So already there's a housing deficit of 17 million now. By 2030, it's going to go to 22 million. So just look at that. The laws of demand and supply says that you need to be in housing now. So get a house. You're not going to make money immediately. It's a long-term strategy, but you're definitely going to make money. So get a house. It's very very important because if you don't have a house now. It's, every year is going to get more difficult. Every year is going to get more difficult just because of the laws and the, of this of demand and supply. You know, you already have a deficit. The deficit is growing. The population is growing. So there's going to be more people going after fewer houses. So you're going to be in a position in the future to command a great amount of money for as rent, a great amount of money for you know things involved with your house. So housing is the first business that's going to make you a millionaire tomorrow. Now, what's the second business that's going to make you a millionaire tomorrow? Agriculture. Agriculture. Because a growing population needs to feed. A growing population needs to feed. And take a country like a continent like Africa. In Africa, every year, Africa spends $37 billion importing food. Why? Because Africa cannot feed itself. Africa cannot feed itself. You know, so it's going to be, a, in fact, already it's a big business. You know, already it's a big business. I was talking to somebody in the African Development Bank, you know, and they were talking about how a lot, most of their uh, borrowings right now is going not to infrastructure, it's going that, uh, um, or uh, it's going to agriculture. So even if it's going to infrastructure, it's going to infrastructure that is targeted at agriculture. Because, you know, uh, the president of the African Development Bank has said, said it, that in Africa, the, the millionaires of tomorrow are going to be people who are in agriculture. They call them agropreneurs. So you can research that. So it is um, estimated that agriculture is going to be giving you like a return on your investment of something like 15% annually, which is unheard of. Which is unheard of. The stock market in America gives you like between like eight and ten percent. You know, so if you are buying bonds, bonds give you like between that's U.S. Treasury Treasury bonds. They give you like between two to five percent. So if you are getting fifteen percent on an on a return on your investment on agriculture, then it beats the stock market. It beats Treasury bonds, and it's something that we we know that the laws of demand and supply are in favor. So you think about it right now. Africa's population right now is somewhere around one point two billion, one point one one point two billion, and Africa is already um, importing three uh, thirty seven billion dollars worth of food. Now, if African nations, you know. If they 
because like a country like Nigeria, a country like Ethiopia, you know, Kenya, um, uh, countries with a large population, what they're trying to do is that they are trying to reduce that food uh, import bill by growing food internally. So if you can grow food internally, if you can go into agriculture, yet it's a, it's a business that's going to give you a high return of investment. And with agriculture, you know, you don't have to own land. You know, in most African countries, the land, you can actually get land for agricultural purposes from the government if they know it's for agricultural purposes. So it's a business that you want to get into for, I mean, not for sentimental reasons, but for real profit reasons. Now, what's the third business? The third business is this, cryptocurrency. Why? Because cryptocurrency is replacing fiat currency. All over the, all over the world is replacing fiat currency. You know, um, right now, something like 45% of all small and medium-scale businesses in America accept crypto cryptocurrency. No other currency is growing, including the U.S. dollar, is growing at that rate of acceptance. No other currency. It's gotten to the extent now whereby the New York State Department of Finance is now um, um, authorizing uh, cryptocurrency people to produce digitized dollars. So it's just US dollars, but they are just digitized US dollars. So for instance, you have BUSD, you have USDT, and other digitized dollars that, are, that they have one-on-one -on -one parity with the US dollar. And then you see Russia, initially at the beginning of this year, they said they're going to ban cryptocurrency. But then when they saw, you know, like um, um, how it was really affecting the economy, the Minister of Finance might have said, no, we're not going to ban cryptocurrency. We are going to accept crypto cryptocurrency only that we're going to regulate it. So now we now have now September 7th, a country like El Salvador has said Bitcoin, one of the major cryptocurrencies, is now our official legal tender. All over the world, all over the world, a lot of people are surprised by the number of people who are dealing in cryptocurrencies in their country. Take a country like Nigeria. In, it will surprise that in Nigeria, 13 million people, even with the government shenanigans, are involved in cryptocurrency. In India, it's much larger. In India, it's, it's, over, it's over, over 100 million people. And it is growing. So fiat currency is going to die out because the problem with fiat currency, inflation, you know, devaluation, you know, the government controls it so the government can seize it. But cryptocurrency, it, I mean, all of that, they don't apply to cryptocurrency. So it's projected, and not just by me, by Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Financial Times, that fiat currency is going to be taking a dip and cryptocurrency is going to be going up. So you want to invest in cryptocurrency now. I told people about three weeks ago, invest in cryptocurrency, invest in Bitcoin, invest in Ethereum. Then it was about $32,000 per unit of Bitcoin. Right now, it's about $44,000. You know, I invested, I made money. If you had invested, you would have made money. But it's not just for you to make money. It's for you to hold because the future is cryptocurrency. My name is Ronald Murphy. If you've watched this and you have questions arising from what I've said to you, put them in the comment section. And my staff will curate them. They'll bring them to me and I'll respond to them. Now, remember, I don't have a Gmail email address. I don't have a WhatsApp forum. I don't have a Telegram channel. Scammers are saying that my videos tend to go viral. And so what they do is that they create fake YouTube profiles and they approach people in the comment section, offering them uh, WhatsApp uh, guidance, offering them helplines, offering them um, Telegram channel, email, uh, Gmail email addresses. They have scammed a number of people. Don't let them scam you. My name is Ronnie Monkey once again. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.